God wants you to speak faith. Well, praise the Lord, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Speak Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us. Today, we're going to be talking about some exciting things that you need to be paying attention to in this time right now. We are in a unique time uh, in this particular era that we're in. I've heard it called unprecedented, and indeed it is. Unprecedented is a good word. Uh, one of those $3 words for you <laughs> to start the netcast today. Uh, why is it unprecedented? Because it's never happened before. We have never closed down the country, closed down commerce, closed down churches over fear of a virus or a sickness or a disease. And believe me when I tell you, it is fear motivated. Okay? It is fear. People are consumed with fear. And uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of staying free of fear. Be, not being consumed by it. Now, there's a difference between wisdom and fear. You know, I'm not going to go out and find somebody that has coronavirus and have them sneeze all over me <laughs> just to prove something. You know what I'm saying? That would not be wise, all right? But I'm also not going to hide in my house and close the doors and look out and peek through the windows and go, Oh, woe is me. What am I going to do? That is being in fear. That's being driven by fear. All right? So there's wisdom and there's fear. And the two are not mutually exclusive. Okay? There's a lot of people say, you know, if, if you're hiding in your house, that you're not in faith. <sighs> no. If I choose to stay home, which I do a lot anyway, because <laughs> I work out of my office here at the house, then that's fine. But I don't get into fear over it. I don't let fear drive me. I don't let fear control me. And see, that's what's happening I've heard people, I tell you, I've heard people won't even go outside. Not even to walk to the mailbox, you know, or get a little sunshine and exercise. I'm not talking about congregating with people. I'm talking about just going outside the door. There are people not doing that. Now, folks, that's fear. And that's got a hold of you and it's gripping you. And it's keeping you from doing what you need to be doing. Okay? So, fear motivation is what, one of the things we're going to be talking about today, among many other things. Uh, listen, Word of Faith Radio is a resource for you. It is a resource, particularly during this time. You should be listening to Word of Faith Radio. Now, we've got the main station where we have teaching. We have the King James Version station where you can hear the Bible spoken continuously, 24-7, every day of the week. The Word of God's going forth. Then we've got the music station where you can hear good, anointed Christian music. Okay? And then we also have a fourth station, which is the healing station. And that station is the most important for you to be listening to right now. You need to be hearing the Word of God concerning healing. Constantly and consistently. Now, I don't know about you, but I listen to the Healing Station every night as I go to sleep. I have it turned on, and I just let it play all night long. I go to sleep hearing the Word of God concerning healing. So the Word of Faith radio station, WOFR.org, as it says there on the screen, is a great resource for you. Now, another resource for you is SpeakFaith.tv. Now, you can go there. And find out how to hook up your Roku to the Roku channel, SpeakFaith.tv, and get the Word of God preached to you on demand anytime you want. Or you can go to our streaming, SFTV.io channel <laughs> on the web, which is right there on the screen, 
sftv.io. Now, that's the address that you plug into your browser. All right? We also stream it on Facebook. Matter of fact, as I'm recording this right now, it is streaming out over Facebook. Live. Now, it's live in the sense that the stream is going out live. The programs are actually the programs for the various speakers for that week or, in a lot of cases, that day. You know, Kenneth Copeland's program is a daily program, Monday through Friday. So his program will be different every day. Andrew Womack's program will be different every day. Joyce Meyer's program will be different every day. You see the, the, the way it works. Those are the daily programs. But there are weekly programs like uh, Dr. Jesse, uh, Jesse Duplantis, Dr. Jerry Savelle, <laughs> Jesse Duplantis, similar. And they like to pal around together, too. <laughs> but at any rate, those programs are weekly programs. Okay, so they come on once a week. Therefore, those programs rotate and play over and over on sftv.io, okay? And we have changed the schedule for sftv.io. We've, we've had to clean it up a little bit because some of our uh, broadcasters, um, and I'm not going to name any names here, but some of them are not putting out programs on a consistent basis. I don't know if it's particularly during this time or if it's just something going on that they, you know, people can't get to their ministries to work. I don't know. You know, not, not bringing judgment on anybody, all right? But if they can't post the programs in a timely basis, I can't put them on the channel, okay? So, sftv.io is available for you, all right? And then, of course, let me also mention our website, speakfaith.org. You can always go to speakfaith.org, our website, and get a tremendous number of resources. Uh, our audio programs, our old newsletters from the old print newsletter days that we used to put out back in the 80s. Uh, all of our teaching is right there on speakfaith.org. So I encourage you to go check that out as well. Now we're talking about fear. Now we know that the Word of God says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but He's given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. This is what I want you to think about during these days that we're in. Don't be motivated by fear. Fear is of the devil, just like faith is of God. All right? Fear and faith are reciprocals. That's a fancy way of saying they're opposites. Okay? If you get on a number line and go one direction, that's a positive number line. But if you get on the number line and go the opposite direction, that's a negative number line. Well, we want to stay positive. We don't want to be negative. We want to be in faith. We don't want to be in fear. And here's the thing about it. If I start in a positive direction on a number line and just start going positive, up, counting through the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up, the moment I turn around and start going in a negative direction, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, I start going negative. All you have to do is turn. You can turn from positive to negative in an instant. You can turn from negative to positive in an instant. And that change is the same concept that is used when we talk about repentance. Repentance is to change your direction, positive to negative. Well, in this case, when most people talk about repentance, they're talking about turning from sin and turning to the Lord. And, of course, that's the ultimate use of that word repentance. But the same concept of repentance, turning from one direction and going in another direction is true of faith and fear. You can be operating in fear and get a hold of yourself, study the Word of God, hear the Word of God concerning faith, and turn, change your direction. In effect, repent of the fear and move in a positive direction, the direction of faith. Now, this is an important concept for you. You really need to get a hold of this. Operating 
in faith means you don't operate in fear. If you're operating in fear, you are not in faith. Did you get that? If you're operating in fear, you cannot be, by definition, in faith. But now if you're operating in faith, by definition, you're not in fear. Now, you've heard me tell the story about how I ended up in the hospital and how the Lord got me out of that. But now here's what you need to hear. While I was in the hospital and the doctors were telling me I had a week to live, I had the opportunity, listen closely, I had the opportunity to get into fear. It would have been easy to say, oh no, what am I going to do? But that would not be operating in faith. Faith doesn't fear. So what did I have to do? I had to grab a hold of the Word of God that said I'm the healed of the Lord, that Jesus bore my sicknesses, that he carried my diseases, and that by his stripes we were healed, 1 Peter 2.24. All right, I had to grab a hold of that, grab a hold of it and not let go. And I had to operate in faith, which meant I could not operate in fear. I had to let fear go. I had to pass it on by. Do you see what I'm saying? I had to release fear and grab faith. All right, if you'll do that, you can come out of any situation. And of course, as you know, I got out of the hospital. I didn't die in a week. That's been almost three years ago now. Three years ago. And I'm not dead. <laughs> the doctors are scratching their head. I thought he'd be dead by now. <laughs> but no. Why? Because I grabbed hold of faith and I rejected fear. I pushed it away. I wouldn't have anything to do with fear. Now, it's the same thing right now during this whole coronavirus thing. People are being frozen by fear. It's come upon them like a heavy cloak settled down on them. And they are just crazed with fear. And they're, they're looking out their windows and, oh, woe is me. I mean... My wife was in a grocery store, and she was checking out. She was getting some stuff that we needed. You know, you go to the grocery store, you get milk and things like that. So she was checking out, and the lady in front of her was at the counter, and the, the little checkout girl, you know, was, was totaling up her stuff that she'd got. And the checkout girl rubbed her nose. <laughs> And the lady who was at the counter went, she touched her face, she touched her face, and she freaked out. Freaked out. Well, guess what? I touch my face whenever I want to. <laughs> Dr. Bill, do you not wash your hands? Yes, I wash my hands. See, my hands are clean. No goop on them. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm not in fear about touching my face. And the lady shouldn't have been in fear about that little girl touching her face. Now, you know, again, you go out and you rub some surfaces where some people have been. <laughs> you lick your, your fingers. That's not wise. <laughs> okay? Let's use some common sense here. But if you need to touch your face because she's got a scratchy nose... Come on, don't be in fear. That's the point. I mean, on the one hand, it's a little frustrating to even have to say this. All right? Christians ought to know better than be fear-motivated. We should always be faith-motivated. All right? But unfortunately, this thing, like I said, it's like a, it's like a cloak that has descended on people, and it's covering them up in fear. Don't be driven by fear, folks. All right? Yes, use wisdom. 
but you don't have to live in fear. All right? So I'm not going out, and I'm not finding every person, every stranger on the street shaking their hand. That's not my purpose. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying if I need to get in the car and drive to the store and pick up a carton of milk, <laughs> I ain't going to freak out over it either. You know? I'm not going, oh, what am I going to do? i got to go to the store. Just go to the store. You see what I'm saying? Don't be driven by fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power. He has given us a spirit of love. He has given us a spirit of a sound mind. That's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Now here's the thing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says that Jesus... Listen to this now. Jesus was moved... Well, let me back up. I'm just going to read it to you because I'm, I'm convoluting two scriptures. One is about Jesus being moved by compassion, and he was moved by compassion. The other is that he operated in the power of the Holy Spirit. All right? So let's go and look at it over in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I don't want to just quote it off the top of my head, particularly if I'm going to, you know... Put two scriptures together. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Amen? Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he, Jesus, went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now what I want you to see here is, Jesus of Nazareth. See, I like the way this is phrased in Acts 10, 38. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus the man. Jesus Christ is Jesus the anointed one in his anointing. The word Christ means anointed one in his anointing. Okay? So that, that's, his, that's his God name, if you will. All right? And then you got Jesus of Nazareth, the man. Just as much man as you or I. That man, Jesus of Nazareth, was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Well, let me tell you, folks, if you're a believer, you are anointed with the Holy Ghost, if you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and power. You got the anointing in your hands. If the anointing's in your hands... It'll burn out anything that shouldn't be there. All right? So Jesus... Now, I want you to think about this. I saw this on, on Facebook, and I had to say a hearty amen. <laughs> Somebody said, Did Jesus not lay hands on people because he was concerned about getting a sickness or disease? And, of course, people say, Oh, yeah, but that was Jesus. He's the Son of God. I mean, after all, he's Jesus. Well, guess what, folks? You're a son or a daughter of God as well. Jesus is your big brother if you're born again. Amen. Jesus said, the things that I'm doing, you will do also, and even greater things than these, and these, the these he's talking about are the healings in his ministry, even greater things than these shall you do. But notice he did say, you'll do the things that I've been doing. I mean, the disciples, didn't they go out and do the things that Jesus had been doing after he was raised from the dead and, and ascended to the Father? Didn't Peter, James, and John continue to go around and do the things? Well, hey, you're there to do the things, all right? You're there to lay hands on the sick and watch it recover. If you can't lay hands on the sick, because I'm scared, I'm scared, Dr. Bill. Well, then, you're not going to do the things. You see what I'm saying? No. You have to realize that the anointing of God is in your hand. And if you need to lay hands on the sick so that they recover, you need to do that. But you need to do that with no fear. Fear opens the door to the operation of the devil. 
Notice, Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The devil is the oppressor. The devil is the one making people sick. God doesn't make you sick to teach you something. That is completely, patently, totally unscriptural. Now I'll stand here and stare you down on that one. The devil's the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy, John 10.10. 10. The devil's the one that oppresses with sickness and disease, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. So, I mean, after all, that's the source. <laughs> the devil's the one that brought sickness into the world to start with when Adam fell, when he committed high treason and turned his authority over to the devil. First thing the devil did is bring in death, bring in stealing, bring in destroying, bring in killing, because that's all he comes to do. That's what John 10.10 10 says. The thief cometh not but for two. It's good King James, but it means he only comes to do these certain things, killing, stealing, destroying. That's what he comes to do. And when he came into the earth and took over as the God, little g, little g-o-d, of this world system, he brought in the killing, he brought in the stealing, he brought in the destroying, he brought in the coronavirus, he brought in all the plagues. Okay? So Jesus goes about doing good and healing all who were oppressed to the devil. Well, guess what, folks? We, as believers, should be going about and doing good and laying hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's Mark chapter 16. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Yeah, but Dr. Bill, if I lay hands on them, I have to touch them. Yeah. Yeah, you will. Now, unfortunately, I foresee a day. I've already heard people talking about this, where... They're saying that we may never touch anybody again. You know, we may never shake hands again. You know, come up and shake somebody's hand and, and, and welcome them to your church or whatever. Oh, no, we can't touch them. Not supposed to touch them ever again. I mean, yeah, after the whole COVID-19 thing is gone, long gone, they're saying, oh, you, we may never touch anybody again. Folks, that's completely unscriptural. Because i got to lay hands on the sick, and if the sick come up, I'm going to lay hands on them. And I am going to do it. Now, you do what you want to do. But I'm going to obey the Word of God. All right? And I'm not going to be motivated by fear. I'm going to move in faith, and I'm going to do what the Word of God says to do. So this whole business of, well, you know, churches, they'll never lay hands on anybody ever again. You got that wrong, because I go to a church. And I go to a church that'll lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. And that's just the way it is. Now, you know, are we meeting right now? No, because the earthly legal system has said we're not supposed to meet, so we're not. You know, we're obeying those that are in authority. But there's going to come a day when they release everybody and then we're going to need to lay hands on the sick and people recover. Amen. And you know, if I run across you right now and I'm out and about and you're sick and you need ministry, I'll lay hands on you because the anointing is in my hand. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of people are going, oh, Dr. Bill, I, now, I wouldn't say that now. I wouldn't say that. Well, that's why it ain't going to work for you. Because you got to say it. you got to speak out of your mouth what is the word of faith. Amen. Woo. Done got into some good stuff. Hallelujah. Well, listen. If you want to write me right here, you can write me at my email address, drbill at speakfaith.org. And don't write me any dumb letters, dumb emails about, oh, Dr. Bill, you, you should, I'm, I'm so worried about you. I told people on Facebook, don't worry about me. I'm part of the control group. 
<laughs> hallelujah. You just meditate on that a little bit. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. You can also write me at my regular mailing address, paper mail, snail mail. Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. The zip code 27262. I tell you what, folks. The rubber has got to meet the road. There comes a time whether you believe it or you don't. Where you walk in faith or you walk in fear. Now, as for me and my house, we will walk in faith. As for me and my house, we will obey the word of God. Amen. And you do whatever you want to do. It is not my purpose to force anybody to do anything or not do anything. I present to you what the word says, and you choose to obey it or you don't. You choose to live it or you don't. And that is entirely up to you. I'm just saying... As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that means we're going to be laying hands on the sick and they'll recover. That means we're going to do what the Word of God says to do. We're not going to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. See, there's some people saying, people will never meet in churches again after this. Even after they've said you can do it, people won't go. Well, the reason they wouldn't go is because they're fear-motivated. Because fear has gotten them frozen. That's serious stuff, folks. It's preventing you from doing what the Word of God says to do. Assemble yourselves together. Particularly so much more as you see the day approaching. These are the last of the last days. And as we see that day getting closer and closer and closer, we ought to be meeting together and supporting one another. More than ever before, not less. Amen. Well, we're out of time. We're going to have to go. I want you to meditate on these things. I want you to consider these things. And make a decision to follow the Word of God and obey the Word of God and not live in fear. Not be fear motivated. Amen. I trust you enjoyed it today. Join me again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Speak Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.